And the two control boards and the meter and the shuttle controls are on one sort of metal cassette here. I'll detach the cables first. So we have these two coming from the power board. This red one here, let's say from memory that's coming from one of the monitor boards under here. These four, I would have known if you'd asked me two years ago, but like I said, it's been a while since I opened one of these. I'll do a different video going into a bit more detail about what cable does what. And uh, that cable that we already detached because it was tangled up with the magnetic head cables. I think that's all of them. Um, all these plugs here, if memory serves me correctly, are connecting the two control boards. We don't need to detach them at this stage. And then this metal cassette is held via two three screws and then that fourth corner there's a little metal tab that goes into a slot I think you can just see that at the bottom of the screen there I'm pointing out with the screwdriver so you can see that this metal cassette actually includes three boards so there's control B control A is in the middle there and then here's your shuttle controls with user feedback LEDs imagining you needed to disassemble this cassette further Let's say you needed to get at the far side of this because you wanted to solder in some new switches. There's one, two, three, four, five, six of these screws. They've got a flat head and then there's smooth protrusion and then a short shaft with a narrow ferrule on it. And that allows a little bit of give. Even with these tight, that board can wiggle around a little bit. So I guess that's important for how it interacts with the plastic button caps on top. You can pull that back like that and get any soldering access that you need. You can see that the the counter itself is a, there's a, I forget the proper name for this, but it's a type of um, vacuum tube. You can see there's a little vacuum tube nipple guy at the top here. Say that was dead and you'd got a parts machine and you were going to swap them over. And remove the screw there. It's sitting in a big multi-pin socket here, so I think I just need to give this a wiggle. Yeah. So you can see that's got 14 pins and going into header on this control board A. In order to access the rear of the control boards, detach control board B from the top of the cassette via four screws. There's one already removed there and I'm going to remove these three. One, two, three. That will then fold back like that. I mean, you could detach all those cables at that stage if you wanted. Um, but that gives you access to the underneath of these two boards if you need it to solder anything there. I've never had to repair this one. I have had to repair this one several times. Um, I've had logic problems here to do with how the tracks arm had problems with the power coming into it. And uh, you don't often see double-sided PCBs. Most PCBs in Porter Studios and you know the Fostex and Yamaha offerings are like this, where the tracks are on one side and it's this kind of brown material on the other. But this one, I guess, because of the sort of integrated chips that are on it, you can see it's double-sided, so that's harder to work with. Ideally, you'd have a desoldering station. Uh, you can get around with clamping it and um, applying the soldering iron from one side and the solder sucker from the other. That will be the subject of another video, because actually this one in here, you can see I've written on the bottom of it. No power. I've got a couple of spares so I'm gonna make a Frankenstein monster to the best parts of several of these boards to get this up and running again. If you want to get at the pitch adjust control and the DBX switch for cleaning you could probably do some of that in situ but it's a little bit easier to remove this daughter board. It's attached to the metal chassis by two screws and the screws into the metal chassis are all going to be a shortish brassish looking narrow ferrule. That'll just lift out. I forgot something and I'm editing this in out of sequence. When you first open this, there's probably going to be one extended screw going through a hole in the record playback amplifier here. It opens with the same standard kind of screwdriver as the others, but it's passing through that board. And uh, we'd be going into a hole beside where I'm tapping here. You can see in my case, I've just used a normal screw instead. And it's part of how these two boards are secured to the chassis. So if you lose that, you can just use the same sort of screw that's used everywhere else. This record playback board is typically connected in four places. I've only got two of them screwed in. One, two, three, and four. 
may find that these cables have cable ties around them and that they're tucked under this metal bracket, but there's basically two large headers here. Lift that around there and gently lift that because there's a cable running along here, breaking off to these four sockets. And there's another cable that joins into this PCB gear. Um, if you look at the far side of that, that's got a lot of your direct outs, your effect out, your monitor out. It's a bit of a wiring hub. We've got three large plugs going into that. And then there's another three cables attaching from this large board to these monitor boards. So there's a little two wire red socket about two thirds of the way up on this left one. The same height, there's a white one. And then down here, we've got a four pin header with green, blue, purple, and gray wires. At that point, that's completely detached. Um, should you need to access the rear side of this for desoldering, this shielding is held on by two screws at the diagonal corners. The other one, two, three, four screws are attaching the PCB to these metal brackets and there's no need to detach them. 